Fun fact, half the reason I got started with painting is because I really love the aesthetic of the easel. And in all total, I don't think I needed to spend more than 15 pounds on that. I'm still using tutorials on YouTube. Hey, what's up? I'm Adamo if you're new here. And if you're returning, then you know, what's good? Let's talk creative pursuits. I wanna share some tips or some steps for anyone who's thinking about starting a creative pursuit or if you're just yearning to connect with that side of you a little bit more, whether that be painting, photography, dance, starting a musical instrument, whatever it is. If you're kind of up to date with my channel, then you'll know that I recently started painting and photography. And it's been a really important exercise in me connecting with that side of me and learning to do things for the sake of the thing versus some end goal, some productivity objective or whatever the case is, you know, art for the sake of art, if you will. And I think a lot of us today are so focused on all the things that we're trying to achieve and, you know, the end goals we're trying to get to, our financial goals, whatever the goal is, that we forget to kind of pour into this side of ourselves. And I've been definitely guilty of this. So that's what I want to get into today, because I know it can be hard starting off and knowing, you know, where to go, what you're going to need, all these different things that come with starting a creative pursuit, like, say, painting. And so I just want to share that here. Do leave a comment letting us know what your own creative pursuits are, whether you are two years into your journey, you haven't started yet and it's just an idea. I think it's really important to kind of get those ideas flowing and perhaps you may help someone else in the comments, including me. My first step for starting a creative pursuit is to note down all of the creative activities that you've ever come across, potentially been interested in, maybe you've seen it in a movie, maybe you're just really interested in the aesthetic and write them all down. Fun fact, Half the reason I got started with painting is because I really love the aesthetic of the easel and <laughs> this, this idea of this woman sitting in front of it painting a beautiful painting with perhaps a glass of wine or, you know, a cup of tea, whatever it was. And I'm not ashamed to say that that's half the reason I started and I'm so glad I did because now I am kind of immersed in something that I'm finding really fulfilling and there's something about putting on some smooth music, whether that be like something like classical music or something like jazz and just painting. So yes, that is my first tip. Just note down everything. It doesn't matter. Don't hold back here because it's really just about getting some ideas on paper so that you can refine them in the next step. Which leads me on to step two, which is about focusing in on one to two of these creative pursuits. The thing about when you're starting something off, if your eggs are in too many baskets, you may not be able to give each of these things an actual chance and you may kind of skim over them because you haven't allowed yourself to engage with the activity properly. Like if I'm trying to do six different things at once in one week and be like, okay, almost in that kind of productivity to-do list like way. It may be ones that you're just kind of pulled to, maybe ones that have been lingering in your mind for a while and you think I'll start off with that or, or whatever it is. So the next step is to research the minimum equipment you need to get started. When you are starting out in a particular endeavor, it doesn't make sense to spend hundreds or even thousands of pounds or dollars on equipment for this, because if you decide that you don't like it, you are now stuck with all of this, right? So it makes sense to just research what is the bare minimum I need to get off the ground. For example, with painting, all I really needed was a canvas, a set of paint brushes and some paints. And in all total, I don't think I needed to spend more than 15 pounds on that. So I could get off the ground with very little investment. I did also decide to get an easel because as we have established, I was half in it for the aesthetic, <laughs> but it's not much for that particular thing. And a lot of activities are like this. If you're interested in photography and you have a smartphone, the power of those cameras is pretty incredible. So maybe then the minimum equipment you need is the phone in your pocket and a nice scene. Like maybe you wanna go outside and take some photos before you know think about, even think about investing in cameras that cost thousands and the lenses, anyway, we won't go into that that you can just get started with those two things. So research that, look on, I looked on like YouTube and you can read guides and things like that. There's lots of guides out there. So the next step is to follow tutorials to help get you into the swing of things. I started off and I'm still using tutorials on YouTube because I had no real background in painting except maybe back in year nine when we were doing some paintings and I can't recall anything. But following through these tutorials gave me confidence that, you know, I could do this. Yes, I'm guided, but you know, I'm learning alongside this person and I didn't know how to mix paints or all these sorts of things. I had no clue about using brushes to achieve certain textures and things like that. But with the tutorial that I have found on YouTube, and I'll leave the links to some if you're specifically interested in painting as your pursuit, 
really helped give me a lot of confidence. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw I'm quite proud of what I was doing and quite happy and enjoyed the process because I wasn't just thinking, oh, here's a scene and I'm gonna have to somehow paint this. And there's a number of places you can see these tutorials. YouTube is the main place, I think, but also things like Skillshare, where they are like classes almost, and they take you through each step and guide you through learning the basics and things like that. So make use of all of those things. So leading on from that is the option of workshops. Now these are great for a number of reasons. First off, you can use their equipment to kind of get a feel for the particular pursuit without having a huge upfront investment, right? And also get the benefit of the guidance of a teacher. But this is especially important if you are doing a creative pursuit that has a high upfront cost, like it involves purchasing an instrument that may cost hundreds or even thousands. Like perhaps you want to start the piano or you think you may want to, but you don't want to invest in an actual piano right now because you're not sure how this is going to go. And so going to these workshops or these classes can allow you to pretty much test the waters, right? Play with these things without forking out a huge amount of money. And finally, the network. You're gonna be around people who are probably at the same stage as you. Maybe they're slightly different, but if you go to a group class, then you can kind of leverage that too and build up a network of people that you can reach out to, that you can share your work with, that you can just chat about creative stuff with, which is brilliant. I once went to a pottery workshop and I had a lot of fun that day, but I didn't decide to kind of go forward with it. It didn't grip me that much, but it was still a great experience. I still haven't collected the plate I made that day. So the final thing I want to talk about is following inspirational accounts on things like Instagram, you know, YouTube, whatever social media platform you're on. It's really important in kind of creating the environment around you, especially online as well, since we spend so much time there, that can help inspire you, help drive you, give you ideas, motivation. You know, it's just really nice to be able to see what other people are working on. And also you can share your own work. That's obviously not a prerequisite to this, but I have my art Instagram now where I'm sharing my work and my journey and trying to be quite open and transparent about that. <laughs> And also it's where I'm following other accounts so I can see what people are up to like in the, at the moment, acrylics painting world or photography world. So yes, follow some people. So that's it. I hope this has encouraged you to get started with a creative pursuit. It's been one of the best things I've done lately and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm hoping that more people will kind of join in with it and allow themselves to free up that part of them and enjoy that side of them. <laughs> I say side as though they're two halves of a body, but it's all really one, I guess. Yeah, profound. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video.